everyone. So, uh, in this lecture, we will continue the discussions on to the sources of wastewater. We are going to talk uh, some of the pollution aspects in the wastewater because essentially as we are uh, talking in our very first lecture that wastewater is essentially considered or normally perceived as a burden because there are pollutants available in it. So, because it has uh, the harmful constituents which makes it not fit for direct uses uh, in uh, most scenarios and that is why we consider this as a burden. So, when we talk about the wastewater processing or treatment, we have to have an idea of the from where the wastewater is coming. Now, we did talk about the different sources of wastewater that sources what we discussed was about the origin from where the wastewater is being originated. Now, the sources can be classified or can be perceived in a different approach also. So, uh, what we are going to cover in this lecture is about the sources of wastewater or the type of sources of wastewater where it is actually introduced in the nature. So, generation is one aspect, water is uh, we generate water in our households or in our factories, industries, but whatsoever let us say we are, uh, uh, we are uh, getting water out of our kitchen sink, we are getting water out of our bathroom. So, all this type of sources or the places where wastewater is being generated are there. But when we talk about the processing of wastewater or treatment of wastewater, we are not going to put treatment in each and every household. We are not going to put treatment in every kitchen sink, we are not going to put treatment in every bathroom. So, the water when we talk about the processing or subsequent uh, uh, treatment of wastewater, we have to get an idea how wastewater comes into the environment. So, like when water is released from independent houses or uh, let us say uh, a specific factory, what happens after that and when it is introduced in nature in what form it is getting introduced. So, based on that also the sources can be classified. So, we will be talking some of those aspects here. Before that, when we say that water is essentially unfit for uses or considered as a burden wastewater because of the pollution or contamination in it. So, we should realize what we are talking about. What is a pollutant? Because when uh, we were just in the earlier session, we were saying that water is rich in the sediments or rich in the uh, pesticides, fertilizers, the agricultural runoff water or industrial runoff water may be rich in organic loadings or various other harmful and toxic materials. Our uh, domestic sewage is again rich in the uh, various elements. So, when we say that the water is polluted, okay, because essentially we are afraid of the wastewater because it is polluted. So, when we say that something which is polluted, what we are actually referring to? What is a pollution or what is a pollutant? Whether I am sure like uh, the basic idea of pollution is uh, everybody knows what pollution is, but when we specifically talk about what is pollution, how broad perception we can generate about the pollution, whether the pollution depends on where it is present, whether it depends on its quantitative aspects, how much it is present, whether it depends on whether it is a natural or anthropogenic, whether it is defined based on the health impacts or not. Well, there are uh, two terms which are typically coined the pollutant and contaminant. These people often use as a synonym, okay. uh, however, there is a very minute basic difference exist between this. Further, for all practical purpose, we can interchange them. Okay. Pollutant, we, we must realize that we are talking about something which is unwanted. Okay. That is why we want to remove the contamination, we want to remove the pollution. 
So, we are talking about something which is unwanted. Now, whether this unwanted thing is naturally occurring, has been added anthropogenically, whether this unwanted thing is having any adverse health impact or not. So, all this thing is what sort of differentiates between pollutant and contaminant as per uh, few references. Okay. However, many places it is considered same. So, when we say the unwanted, we must realize that what exactly unwanted is, in which, which sense we are talking about the pollution is unwanted. So, we eat, let us say, uh, let us talk about the dissolved oxygen level. Okay. So, dissolved oxygen level in water that we consume is not a criteria, is not a factor, but the dissolved oxygen level in a river water, in a surface water has to be there. Okay. Because if it is not there, so then uh, the aquatic animals which survive based on the oxygen dissolved in the water, if oxygen is not there in the water, they may not be able to survive. So, the same thing may not have any impact or may not be an essential uh, aspect for one type of uses, but is required for other type of uses. Similarly, we all of us consume lot of uh, ingredients in the water that we consume in the uh, water that we use for uh, different purposes. Okay. You are uh, let us say cooking some pulses okay, and you add salt to it. So, whether salt is a contaminant or salt is a pollutant? Obviously not, because you are intensely adding it and you want that to be there in your uh, dal that you are preparing, so that you can uh, eat that and uh, like it, you feel uh, the taste of it. However, what if the quantity of salt which is being added is increased uh, let us say tenfolds. So, now because the so, location of the salt is still same, it is still in that the bowl of the dal, but since the quantity has increased, now it is actually going to create some sort of uh, possibly uh, unwanted effect or unwanted impact. So, now you can consider this as a pollutant because it may have a harmful impact or at least a contaminant because it is not desirable at that quantity. So, something which is not desirable beyond a quantity and is present there is considered as a contaminant or a pollutant for that matter. Now, the pollutant will depend on whether the label is having any adverse health impact or not, whereas contamination even if it is present beyond your desirable expectation or beyond your desirable limit, it is a contaminant for that sake of that. Similarly, uh, let us say we consider the agricultural runoff. Okay. So, we apply the pesticides, we apply the fertilizers to the soil. Right. So, when we are applying them, they are being applied for a useful purpose and they are not a contaminant or a pollutant for the purpose we are applying to it. But when that thing in when let us say we irrigate that field and the runoff which generates brings the level of uh, some molecules or some content of the pesticides and fertilizers or uh, some uh, even sediments along with it. So, the water is not supposed to carry those things. These pesticides, these uh, products or for, for say in our household applications, we use soap. So, we take bath out of that soap. So, is that soap a contaminant? No, because we are anyway using it. So, as a material, it is not a contaminant. As a material, it is not a pollutant, but it is not a contaminant or it is not a pollutant until it is in its original form, until it is in a soap form or in uh, uh, with until it is in a the dispenser. But when we dispense it, when we wash our hands and when it flows with the water, so the water which flows is not supposed to carry or uh, is like water is not the appropriate medium for containing that soap that way. 
So, that is why when it enters into the water medium it becomes a contaminant or be, it becomes a pollutant. So, here the, the substance whether it is soap or it is pesticides or herbicides uh, in the runoff example. So, the substance is the same when it is there in its original state or for some practical purpose or it is being applied somewhere it is not a contaminant, but when it is coming into the water it is becoming it is being considered it is being perceived as a contaminant or a pollutant that is because it is not supposed to be present in the water or water is not supposed to contain all those things the usable water. So, that way it is about the undesirable location of the contaminants of, of the materials. So, if any material is present at an undesirable location it becomes a contaminant it is not only uh, relate in the reference to the water it can be in the reference to other things as well. Okay. We are using mobile we do not consider it as a waste, but when it is uh, not in use anymore or uh, when it has defunct we throw it it becomes a electronic waste. Okay. So, the same thing which is uh, or let us say we, we are writing in a paper book the page is not a waste, but if we tear that page and throw it in a dustbin that becomes a form of waste. So, the point is that something which is in its appropriate location is not a waste when it changes location when it reaches to a place where it is not supposed to where it is undesirable that same thing can be considered or can be perceived as a waste. So, that way any material can be become a waste. The other example earlier that we took about the salt in a uh, bowl of dal is the location is same it is uh, it earlier also it was in a bowl in the same bowl now also it is in the same bowl, but the quantity has increased. So, the it has exceeded a quantitative limit or a quantitative level it has exceeded beyond that level and then we considered this as a form of pollution. So, there we are talking about undesirable quantity. So, if we that we want to define let us say a contaminant. So, we are we are essentially talking about substances or materials which are present either at undesirable location or in undesirable quantity. So, that is what essentially is the pollution. Now, whether it is a contaminant or it is a pollutant whether it is having adverse health impact or not will depend again on the nature of it. Something which is going to have adverse health effect will be called as a pollutant also of course, it is a contaminant as well, but the contaminant may or may not have adverse health impact pollution generally is perceived to have some sort of uh, harmful effects. Okay. Similarly, it whether we are talking about natural or anthropogenic. So, pollution uh, can be natural or can be anthropogenic both form okay. uh, a natural substance increasing the level is uh, also a form of pollution contaminants are usually referred to the foreign materials or the anthropogenic uh, activities which brings un undesirable substances in the water. Okay. So, those kind of things can be considered as a contaminant however, uh, we will not restrict to the division between contaminant and pollution for all practical purpose even if it is harmful or not if it may not be harmful today, but if it is undesirable in water it should be removed. So, for us pollution and uh, although contaminant uh, in a way can be a subset of pollution pollution, uh, pollution in the larger perspective, but we will consider contaminant and we will use rather like pollution which considers both contaminant uh, whether uh, it is harmful or not and whether it is coming from uh, natural sources or anthropogenic sources. So, that way uh, the pollutant can be defined and this is what is the prime reason for the not direct usability of the wastewater. So, in that sense we see that the wastewater that we get is polluted out uh, is having these type of contamination and our target will be throughout this course how to manage this or how uh, in what way it can be processed and these contaminants can be removed. 
Now, for the that purpose, we need to understand that we have to get an idea of how we can capture the wastewater first. Because if you want to process that wastewater, if you want to removal, remove the contaminants from the wastewater, one have to capture that wastewater first. So, one have to get an idea how they are getting introduced in the nature. Now, the contaminants or the contaminated water or wastewater gets introduced in nature in two forms. Okay. There is something which is called point sources and then there is non point sources. It is not limited to just water only, it is for other type of uh, pollution as well. It is, it is applicable for air pollution and other forms as well. However, we will restrict our discussion to the water pollution. So, there are point source pollution and there are non point source pollution. Now, if we see what is point source pollution and what is non point source pollution. So, as per the US EPA, US Environmental Protection Agency, a point source is actually an identifiable source, what we can identify. Okay. So, an identifiable source of pollution from which pollutant can be measured and discharged such as pipe, ditches uh, and uh, in air pollution sense it is uh, smokestacks uh, all those things. Whereas, a non point source is indeterminate source. So, it is an indeterminate source of pollution which cannot practically be measured. Okay. Now, we are having a industry which is discharging its effluent through a pipe. Of course, we can uh, put the flow meter to that pipe and know what is the uh, total discharge coming out of that pipe. So, we can quantify that waste, we can capture that waste, we can process that waste. So, that becomes a point source of pollution. Whereas, in another case, uh, let us say rainfall is occurring on agricultural field. So, you uh, I am sure all of you might have uh, all of you have seen this at somewhere that when this precipitation occurs, you will see n number of channels or uh, small flow lines are coming here and there. So, they are all the way spread and if it is not if it is not collectively coming at one place, it becomes very difficult to know how much is flowing where. You have agricultural field say across a river and when the you irrigate that agricultural field or when there is a precipitation or there is a rainfall occurs. So, what happens that whatsoever runoff is being generated all will actually lead to the river, but it will lead to the river with multiple different small, 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 small channels. It is not possible to measure and monitor all these small channels, number is too large and the flow in each of these approaches is uh, very little. So, this is a dispersed or distributed source. So, non point source is also called as a dispersed or distributed source, because it is an inde indeterminate source and we will not be able to collect it, capture it together until unless we do some those sort of intervention and convert this to a point source. So, uh, that is a big challenge, big task and we will possibly not be able to measure how much flow is taking place. Normally, point source pollution comes from your uh, sewage treatment plants, various industrial applications okay, or uh, landfill. So, the point where we know that the waste will be generated and can be collected itself while the non point sources comes from the uh, fertilizer and pesticides in agricultural runoff or residential area runoff, urban runoff and a uh, few small distributed uh, source or let us say atmospheric deposition when rainfall takes place. So, whatsoever is the impurities in the atmosphere, we know the phenomena of acid rain and all that. So, when the uh, rainfall takes place, those pollutants gets dissolved into the water and they fall at different locations. So, it is it becomes overall distributed and it is not located at a specific point. So, that is what is the non point source. If we see the difference between non point source and point source, so uh, we can see that 
discharge usually controlled by permits because if you are having an industry let us say the point source. So, uh, of course, there will be a discharge limit that you cannot discharge more than this. It is a measurable quantity, it is a measurable characteristics and then there is a possibility because it is collectively coming at one point. So, there is a possibility to capture that, to process that, to treat that. So, all those things are there, it is relatively easy to control that way, easy to monitor. Okay. While non-point sources, because of the many diffused sources from many different locations, so individual contribution could be very small of all these sources, but collective or cumulative effect can be significant. Like if we see the load of pollution coming into our rivers, so, uh, if there are lot of agricultural activities are being done, let us say, so all those eventually wash out. So, each point, each specific point contribution could be very small, but if we see this collective contribution towards this, is, it may actually be probably more than the industrial or the point source discharge. But because of its nature, it is very difficult to monitor, okay. it is very difficult to control it, okay. all those issues are there. So, uh, we can have uh, sort of that way different characteristic and different sources in such cases. So, uh, the couple of examples of point sources as you can see here. So, uh, this is a very interesting image if you see. So, uh, we can see there is a industry or factory or whatsoever is over here which is leading to some discharge and generally the point source is discharge, it is because heavy pollution load is coming at a specific point. So, the effect appears far more immediate okay. and that can be seen in the form of here. So, you can see that this discharge has made this patch of river dark and probably flowing over somewhere here also or that way. So, the quality of water even the visually can be seen poor in the near the point of discharge, because a large mass or a large flow is being discharged at one specific point. Okay. So, the lot of pollution is being introduced at one particular point and that leads to the change in the river water quality or the stream water quality or for that matter whatever source it is, it may be a lake, it may be anything. So, it, it can change the water quality in the vicinity uh, to significant degrees. Okay. Generally, the uh, flows are collective and pretty large flows okay. and when these kind of large flows appear or are discharged at one point. So, the impact or the effect on water quality is uh, very significant in such cases. As opposed to this, if we look for the uh, non-point sources, so in non-point sources we can see that the water which flows can flow actually from the different points. So, uh, this is what you see here is an example of the uh, uh, agricultural runoff, let us say. So, this is your uh, agricultural runoff. Now, here it is apparent that some water is coming from here, some water is coming from here, it is a large channel, but there would not be any like it is it will not be the only channel. Okay the water which is falling on that side may be having another channel, there might be another channel which is coming here. So, there is possibility of like variety of channels and if you want to monitor the let us say pollution level in this place. So, where you are going to monitor here or here or here or here and these different sources could have the different levels also. This runoff may be coming from a larger fraction. So, the kind of pollution level or could be different this the point of uh, some runoff coming from the other section the point of pollution level could be different in that one. So, there is a possibility of the different zones or different streams have the different flow rates 
okay, the quantity could also be different. It's not. It's highly unlikely that they, if there are n number of different streams, so all that n number of different streams are going to have the same discharge. Okay, so uh, they are not. Obviously, they are not. So that way the quantity of from the different streams is going to be the different, the characteristic from the different stream is going to be the different and the introduction point from different stream is going to be the different. So, if we let us say have a river over here, let us say this is our river bo boundary and we are having some agricultural activities across this zone when rainfall precipitation occurring. So, what we see that there is possibility some something is entering from here, something is entering from here, something is entering from here. So, we will obviously have the different channels which are entering into the river that way and their pollution, their load, their characteristic, their quality is all is different. And since it is different and it is being introduced at various points, until unless we make some arrangement and capture all these get a large mass because it uh, otherwise treatment is not feasible at all processing of this is not feasible at all we will when we cannot capture this there is flow is very small the probably the level of pollution is also relatively small because industry uh, the point sources are generally the generally the traditional wastewater either coming from municipalities in the form of sewage wastewater or industrial wastewater. So, they are the processed water which are having far higher concentration as opposed to this which is just may have some uh, naturally dissolved I means the water which has come onto the field or in the urban sector for that matter. So, uh, will have be dis, uh, will be having some impurities some contaminants in it. So, the level of contaminants could be far smaller, the individual flow in these different channels could be far smaller, however, the collective flow could be significant and that is why it is very difficult to manage this because of these small, small, small places, how many places we can capture this, we can monitor this, we can do the desired intervention that becomes practically too much cost intensive process and uh, for that matter unfeasible economically. So, in such cases the non-point pollution sources becomes very difficult until unless we make appropriate arrangement to track that okay, or to uh, sort of trap it and put it into a channel like the urban storm water drains. So, uh, the urban runoff or urban storm water is also a example of non-point sources, but what is done at many places the we have let us say the uh, some opening over here. So, water enters in this one and then it flows through a channel. So, the different non-point sources are collected at different locations, but then eventually they are put to a storm water channel and at the outlet we can get a good quantity or uh, we can get sort of collective storm water of the entire city and then that becomes a point source. Okay. So, we can convert different non-point sources we mixing or uh, putting together different non-point sources in a specific point source as well. So, that is also a possibility and uh, if we want to intervene, if we want to uh, sort of improvise the characteristic of the non-point sources, we have to do this, we have to have collect them, combine them and put to a point source because then only it will be possible to conduct some sort of intervention. So, um, we end uh, this session here only okay, uh, and in the subsequent session uh, of this week, we will talk about the other aspects related to the wastewater issues and uh, what what are the various other uh, aspects that we need to know when we are introducing the wastewater in general. Thank you.